If you thought House of the Dragon couldn't get any crazier than... Honey, you've got a big storm coming. In the Game of Thrones universe, the second last episode of a season has historically been insane. From the Battle of the Bastards to the Red Wedding, judging from this preview, we're in for one hell of a ride. A warning for those of you who are new here, this is a full book spoiler video. And for those of you who haven't seen the trailer or my episode 8 breakdown, I suggest you check those out beforehand. I've left links to them in the description. The Iron Throne sits empty as Otto Hightower announces the death of King Viserys. In the episode 8 subtitles, we did see that the king's breathing had stopped. In the book, the king died at the age of 52 after 26 years on the throne. So a pretty good run compared to other kings. Now it does appear to be nighttime here, so I wonder if we're picking up on the same night we left on in episode 8. In the book, Viserys died during the day while taking a nap, and Alicent and the Greens hid his death for an entire week before announcing it to the public. Now I should mention the name of this episode is the Green Council, and here we see Alicent along with Otto and Sir Kristen at the head of the small council. The Greens, of course, refers to Alicent's side in the upcoming civil war known as the Dance of Dragons. Rhaenyra's side is known as the Blacks, but oddly enough, the preview has no footage of Rhaenyra, so I wonder if this episode will focus purely on the Queen's side. This whole Greens versus Blacks derived during the King and Alicent's fifth wedding anniversary where the Queen wore an extravagant green gown, but was, as some would say, outdone by Rhaenyra who dressed dramatically in Targaryen red and black. Thus it became custom in court to refer to either side as green or black. We have this member of the Kingsguard wiping off what could be blood from a sword. This is likely Sir Criston, however with the trailer's emphasis on two other members of the Kingsguard, twins Arik and Eric Cargill, it's possible it could be one of them. We do see someone with long hair, perhaps one of the Cargills, wearing black gloves, but considering members of the Kingsguard have identical uniforms and armor, we still can't be 100% sure. Maybe this blood is from Sir Harold Westerling. We'll later get this shot of Sir Criston drawing his his sword at the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard. Considering in the books Sir Criston takes over Harold's spot as Lord Commander well before Viserys' death, I think it's a safe bet that Criston kills Sir Harold. After all, I imagine Harold to be loyal to Rhaenyra and not the biggest fan of Alicent and her coup. Criston may also be the one to kill Master of Coin Lyman Beesbury. He's been a stalwart champion of King Viserys's. Here we see Alicent in the dead of night. This may be shortly after the king's body is discovered, or perhaps perhaps she went straight to Otto after she bade the king good night. She'd obviously want to tell her father the interpretation of what the king said shortly before his death. Now in the trailer, she flat out says the king said he wanted Aegon to be king. This may be what she wanted to hear, but the king never said those words. In his Milk of the Poppy Delirium, he was referring to Aegon the Conqueror, not Aegon his son. I do think in Alicent's mind, she believes this is what the king wanted, but that doesn't make it true. She also knows that the king had his doubts about making Rhaenyra heir, as he expressed this to her in episode 3. Here we have a cloaked figure among the crowd. There are three cloaked figures we see throughout the trailer, one of them belonging to Aemond. Maybe it's him. The people of King's Landing are rushing past the city guard and toward a member of the King's Guard here, suggesting someone royal is nearby. Perhaps they're all wanting a glimpse of the new king. There's also a world where the queen has sealed off the city gates as to keep the king's death a secret but the sealing of the gates at this point in time does not happen in the book. Here we have Otto acting as the interim king until Aegon's coronation. It seems as though he's demanding the lords pledge their allegiance to his grandson. Among the members I can make out here are Lord Caswell to the left, and this might be Otto's brother Hobart in the middle. It might also be Lyman Beesbury, but considering he gets killed, maybe not. At the meeting of the Green Council, Otto says the door remains shut until they finish their business. So this has got to be fresh after it's discovered the king has died. It's in this meeting that Lyman Beesbury Beesbury finds himself killed, and the others make a pact to put Aegon on the throne instead of Rhaenyra. Here's Aemon giving the stink eye to his crowned brother Aegon in the foreground. Notice that the crown here is different than that of Viserys's. In the book, Aegon chose this crown, but even if he wanted his father's crown, he couldn't have it because it was stolen and smuggled out of the city where it would be later given to Rhaenyra. A bit later in this preview, I'll go over this crown's significance. We can also briefly see Helena here to Aemon's 
left and a member of the Kingsguard. I think this is Sir Criston considering in the book he's the one to crown the king. Otto tasks one of the Cargills with a secret mission in which no one can know who he is or what he seeks. This could be a few things. It could be to retrieve Aegon who in the book was found naked in the streets after a night of debauchery. It could be to retrieve the stolen crown. Arik is also tasked with leading a contingent to Dragonstone with an offer of peace to Rhaenyra. Should Rhaenyra bend the knee to Aegon the Second, she could keep Dragonstone and pass it on to her son Jace upon her death. And Luke could keep a Driftmark. Cargill's mission could also be to infiltrate Dragonstone, posing as his twin to kill or kidnap Rhaenyra and or her children, although this event shouldn't happen until later on in the series. To make matters more confusing, these twins end up siding with different teams, Arik with Aegon II and Eric with Rhaenyra. This makes for some really interesting drama, as either of them could pose as the other in order to spy or do far worse. Here's Rhaenys held captive in the Red Keep. She would be considered an enemy of the the High Towers after siding with Rhaenyra and Luke's claim to Driftmark. This likely also means that Bela is with her, considering she is her ward. In fact, I think this shot later in the trailer is either Eric Cargill or Sir Stefan Darklin leading a woman, perhaps Bela, out of the city. You can see this person carries with them a black satchel, which may carry Viserys' crown. Portalia and other servants are brought into the dungeons of King's Landing. This was done by the High Towers in an attempt to rid the city and castle of any who would be sympathetic to Rhaenyra. But why then would Talia be here? She was a trusted handmaiden of Alicent. I wonder if her late night escapades acting as a spy to Massaria may have been discovered. Allison asks what of Rhaenyra at the small council meeting. My interpretation is that she's asking the others what to do with her. Do they kill her, make her a peace offering? Whatever it is, it seems to be a very stressful decision for the queen. Now this is one of the most cryptic images from the trailer. On the one hand, it looks like Dragonmont with a cloaked figure jumping into a crevasse. If you look very closely, you can make out another object or person here falling too. Considering the shot before this is of that Kingsguard leading a cloaked figure through the city, maybe it's part of their escape, jumping into the water below to make their way to Dragonstone. And if it ain't that good for nothing, Laura's strong, who tells the queen he's found something that she should know. The next shot is of a small white-haired child. If you saw my episode 8 breakdown, you'd know that it was rumored Aegon fathered two bastards. One from a handmaiden, likely Diana, and the other from a prostitute on the Street of Silk. If this is Aegon's bastard child, what will Alicent do here? Will she have it killed? like Cersei did Robert Baratheon's bastards? Now check out this weird ass fighting arena. It looks as though the common folk are having a hell of a time watching kids duke it out. If you look closely on the back of this one fighter, you'll see the crest for House Tully. So maybe the common folk are having these cage matches to see who will win the Dance of Dragons. Here's Aemon out and about somewhere near King's Landing. Take note of these stone spheres in the background, as we'll later see one of the Cargills fighting someone around here. Aemon, perhaps? Sir Criston draws his sword against Harold Westerling, where we can see a few more members of the Green Council. Jasper Wilde, Master of Laws, Grand Maester Orwell, and a dead Master of Coin, Lyman Beesbury. Here's Allison looking even more stressed, sitting in the King's chair. She's listening to Lyman Beesbury saying that what's happening is seizure and treason in the least. Those will probably be some of his last words. Members of the City Watch create a path for what might be the new King Aegon. Here are the Cargills again, and judging by the background and rough and tumble characters around them, they're in that fighting arena we saw earlier. Maybe they're searching for Prince Aegon, as we'll later see him running away from one of them. Here we see some guards carrying the Targaryen emblem. During Aegon's reign, he will change the Targaryen emblem from red to gold. Some trumpet players in what appears to be the Dragon Pit. We'll later see throngs of common folk pack the pit, which is likely to announce and show their new king. I wonder if this also means Aegon will be on his dragon, Sunfire. Here is Aegon chased by one of the Cargills in the same sept where where Alice and Rhaenyra prayed in episode 2. I gotta admit, it's a pretty good hiding place, because this would be the least likely place you'd expect to find Aegon. And Aegon's tackled. Otto overlooks what might be the coronation of his grandson, looking rather proud. This is what he's been working towards for decades, and it's finally happening. Our final shot is of this dark, rusted crown. This is significant because it's Aegon the Conqueror's crown, 
now being passed on to Aegon II. In the book, it is said to be made of steel and adorned with rubies, but the rubies are missing here. Voiceover of Rhaenys states, Have you never imagined yourself on the Iron Throne? In an earlier trailer, we saw this line delivered to Alicent. Of course Rhaenys would have imagined herself on that throne, considering it was essentially stolen from her at the Great Council. Perhaps she's trying to justify some of her actions to the Queen. I don't know about you guys, but this is my most anticipated episode of the season. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you think will happen next. And if you want more content, check out my Episode 8 Breakdown. Thanks for watching. For more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, he can keep his tongue.